good fish, good fish, good fish. <laughs> he was ready. He was ready. <laughs> <laughs> Just ready. All right, guys. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna demonstrate different kinds of attractants for bucks, deer, etc. for the season. So pretty much post, or pre-season, sorry. So yesterday we set out some cameras. We used this uh, Big and J's to die for corn mix. Pretty good, we had tons of does, uh, had one little buck show up, but we had deer all over the place. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this salt and mineral, mineral block, an attractant and supplement, and we're gonna be using this today. So we're gonna buy that. And then also, probably gonna go with just the no mixing required one because we don't really have any extra mix. And then we're also gonna grab another bag of this Big and J and we're gonna re restock some of the places that we already had cameras. So we're gonna put out another camera today and then at the end of the week, we're gonna get back with you guys and show you which one did better and uh, what ultimately is gonna be the best decision for you guys to be able to attract more deer to your cameras. So stay tuned. All right, so this first spot, we've got a camera right here adjust it a little bit we've got we had a pile of some mineral stuff set up right there and then yeah right here we have this stick right here with some attractant smell on top of it so that's what we're gonna keep that there we're gonna refill the pile and we're also gonna check out this camera and we're gonna check, check this right here so we've got a lot of those on this camera. We've got a couple little bucks too, so far, just in two days. But what we're gonna do at the end of the week, we're gonna pull all of the cards out of this camera, the next camera, and then the third camera that we're gonna put out today. And um, we're gonna show them to you guys like in, in full effect, so. All right, and here we have, this is a new Browning trail camera that I've recently picked up. And what we've got here, is we put out the salt block here, and the, well, corn block actually, and then we've got just kind of the power stuff just kind of scattered everywhere. And hopefully the idea is that the deer will come through here because they usually walk this, they hop over this little barbed wire, and then they go through there. So hopefully this trail camera will pick up some good action here. We've got one more spot we're gonna go refill and then we're gonna be done. We'll check these cameras on Saturday. All right. And here we are, our final spot. As you guys can see, that was a big pile a couple days ago, and it's been absolutely destroyed. We've got a camera set up right there. I don't want to trigger it, but we've also got a scent thing right there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pour, I'm gonna shut this camera off, but then I'm gonna pour more of the mineral right here. And then we're gonna come back again on Friday and check all everything out or actually Saturday sorry correction and we're gonna check everything out all right so we got the new pile so this is the corn mix again B and J to die for long range attractants um, it's done pretty good so far over the past couple days I highly recommend it we also have a little bit of this still left at the first site we went to but also we got some of the black powder stuff as well. And then we've got the black powder and the salt um, and um, corn block at the other spot. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave it at that. We're gonna see which one does better. So stay tuned Friday. We're gonna come back, check all the cameras and see which one is the ultimate winner. All right guys, so we're back after about five days, about a whole week roughly of setting out these trail cameras for deer and using the best kinds of attractants that I could find on the market and seeing which ones work better for being able to attract deer to your trail cameras. So first we're starting off with the first camera that we did. We had about 70 pictures on this camera, but we're going to go ahead and bust it out and just show you guys briefly exactly what we saw. All right. And as you can see, pretty much right off the bat, we had does pretty much all over the area. Oh, a couple little fawns there. And then we had quite a few in some pictures, as you can see, um, some big does. A lot of them are moving through and just feeding off of the uh, feed that we put on the ground. And this was on the B&J's attractant. And there's me. Okay. So pretty much that's what we got on the first camera. This, I mean, we, we did get some more pictures of does here, a couple videos. 
but I mean, nothing, nothing crazy special. All right, so pretty much that was the first camera. Um, like I said, we had tons of does coming over the site and that was on the Big and J's uh, to die for corn mix. But like I said, nothing special, no big bucks. We're gonna go ahead and put this one up and we're gonna move on to the next camera. So the next one, this was actually at the third site. I'm saving the last one, the or the second site for last because we had a lot of pictures on that one. But this one, um, this was with the salt and corn block. We actually didn't get very many pictures at all. They only got 30 pictures on this camera uh, from what it said. So we're gonna have bust this one out and show you guys. Um, I'm not sure exactly if it's the site or the location or if it was even, maybe it just the salt and corn block just isn't the way to go. But I know usually you're supposed to set those out for a much longer extended period of time, but we didn't have that much time for this theory. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out anyway. That's, that's pretty scary. All right, so the first picture we got was the guy's property that I sat it on, he was cutting the grass. Um, all right, so we got a, looks like a doe moving through. Um, I actually realized that I did, and there's a doe leaving the area. I didn't set the camera low enough because I ended up getting a couple pictures of some does coming in. It looks like nothing too major, thankfully. And there's my hat as I went to go pick up the camera. So like I said, there's only about 30 pictures on there. And I kind of just pick and chose the best one for you. And then now we're gonna move on to the, last camera which all of these cameras these are the um tow guard minis trail cameras you can pick these up on amazon for about 45 dollars so the last camera that we're doing today is going to be on the tow guard mini and this one was our second site that we set up but i saved it for last because we had a astounding number of over 890 pictures of deer almost a thousand pictures of deer which i think partially that was my fault because I set the trigger speed a little too quick and I didn't give it enough time in between pictures to recover. But that's okay because we still saw a ton of deer. I'm not going to show you guys everything um, just because for the sake of time in this video, it would take forever to go through every single picture. But I've got a few really good pictures. I didn't, still didn't get any great bucks, but I'm going to go ahead and pop up my favorite pictures. I got, got some funny pictures of some does. Um, and even a funny video here of a doe that got really close up to the camera. Um, but other than that, we got a, we got a little buck that came through. Uh, he might be a monster in about five or six years. Who knows? Um, a potential 180 inch plus deer. You never know. But for now, just a little guy. And that's pretty much the majority of the pictures that we got. But basically, so at the end of the day, I think what worked best for these deer was the Big and J... Um, corn mix versus the uh, black powder stuff and the salt block. Um, we used the salt block at, and the black powder at the site with the um, Bushnell camera, but we used um, the other stuff with these tow guards and they loved it. They were all over it. Also, I wanted to add a couple quick pictures of a big buck that we saw that was spotted at a neighbor's yard just really close to where we hunt. And this is a big boy. So basically we could count that there were 12 points on this guy. He doesn't look to be very old, uh, maybe just a few years old. So he has a lot of potential, um, a lot of potential for growth. I believe he is the son of another big buck that is very close in the area because they have a lot of the similar genetics with their antler growth and the size of their antlers and how many points they have. But this guy's absolutely huge. And we also saw a couple deer um, the other day as we were driving through some fields, we saw a pretty big buck through there too as well. And I'll show you that. And this guy here, um, I couldn't really tell because he was kind of far away at how many points he had, but very big body deer, um, tall tines, absolutely huge. And so, you know, hopefully um, if we can get down this season and we can get one of these guys on the ground, that would be great. Um, obviously use it with your best judgment. Um, I'm not a deer expert by any means whatsoever. I'm new at this and I'm learning, but 890 pictures of deer versus 30 pictures of deer. That's pretty good. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Go out there this season, kill some big bucks, and we'll see you all in the next episode of Angle and A's.